Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy Wayne and today I'll be bringing you a beginner's guide for the Samsung Galaxy Watch 7. In the video I'll walk you through everything you'll need to know to set up and use your new Samsung Galaxy Watch 7. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll need to do is simply plug in your charger and connect that charger right underneath to turn on the watch. And in most cases, it will only take a few seconds for it to make the connection. So there we go. We see the little charging icon and it looks like it already has some battery. Now, what you may also need to do is hold down on the power button for one second to give it uh, a little kick on. And the orange button, the button that has the orange outline, that is your power button. So we verify that it has some juice. We hit the power button to turn it on. And now it's gonna take a few seconds for it to boot up, but then it should send out a ping to all the surrounding phones to try to pair. And there it is. It just sent the ping to the phone. We're gonna tap connect. Now for the video, I'll be pairing the Watch 7 to my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, but I do wanna point out that you can also pair this with any Android phone. It doesn't have to be a Samsung phone. Now, if you're not pairing it to a Samsung phone, what you'll need to do is um, you'll wanna to go to the Play Store and you'll wanna search for the Galaxy wearable app. This is the app that you use to set up and control the watch. So you'll need to download this app to your phone if it's not a Samsung phone. You can simply go to that Galaxy wearable app and we can just do it right through there. I'm gonna to go to the Play Store. I've already downloaded my Galaxy wearable app. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna hit start. Here we go. So you'll wanna just make sure that this number uh, matches what's on the watch here and it does. I'm gonna hit confirm. Now it's gonna download the appropriate software that it needs for this particular watch. I do wanna point out as well, um, this is the Wi-Fi variant of the Watch 7. It's not the LTE version. Um, once the setup is done or somewhere at the end of the setup, there is a pop-up that will ask if you wanna activate the watch with your carrier. So just keep that in mind. Look out for that pop-up if you'd like to enable the LTE service so you can answer calls and texts when you're not by your phone. I'm gonna enable or basically check the box for all the terms and conditions and hit continue. I'm gonna allow permissions for the watch to access all these services. For the next step here, you'll want to link it with one of your Google accounts. Now this is really important because um, if you ever lose your watch, you can use the find my device option to be able to locate the watch. So just FYI there. I'm gonna hit continue. Next, we'll need to accept the terms and conditions from Google, hit I agree. So on this page, we can select a few of the apps that we already have on our phone to be synced up with the watch. I'm gonna hit continue. And next, we can turn on the auto watch backup so it's always backing up your data. Next, you'll select what wrist you'll be wearing the watch on. I normally wear it on my right wrist. Next. It's letting you know you can create custom workout routines. Check your body battery levels. Better sleep. Next. Now this is pretty cool. This is the gesture, one of the uh, fun gestures you can do, which is a double tap, just like this. And on the wrist that has the watch, and this will allow you to answer calls, dismiss alerts. You can play and pause music, and you can also take photos using the camera as well. So that's definitely pretty cool. And there's some new features in terms of uh, an emergency mode that you can trigger emergency services. Um, one being if there is a fall detected or if you're, I believe if you're involved in a crash as well. Let's hit next. There we go. So our watch is now fully set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna move away from the phone right now. And I just wanna do a quick walkthrough of how to use the watch We'll talk about how to navigate just the menus and just the basic things you'll need to know in terms of navigating. The watch does a ton and we can't go over every single thing it does, but I just wanna make sure you understand like where to find things, how to access the settings and what are the important things you'll need to be paying attention to, okay? 
Now you can take a tour. I'm gonna skip the tour for now, but for your watch, take the tour and it'll let you practice some of the different gestures and things. So we'll skip that. All right, so here's our main watch face. And it's showing you that whenever you see a, a little orange or red dot to the left here, it means you have a new notification. So you'd wanna swipe to the right and then you can swipe through those different notifications and things that are coming through the phone. After you've swiped through everything, you can tap this clear all button to get rid of those notifications. So first, let's just start with simple navigation, like how to move around. So um, swiping down from the top of the screen will access your shortcuts at the top here. And you have some fun things here. So first of all, you have your sound settings. So if you wanna put your watch on vibrate or sound off, you're gonna tap that. This is the mute setting. When this is on, if you get a text message, it will make a ping sound. And when you make calls, it will also, uh, it'll ring as well. In the center here, this is the always on display. And basically when this is enabled, whenever the screen is off, you'll still be able to see the time. So if you give it a few seconds, the screen is gonna go off, but then you'll still be able to see the time even though the screen is technically not on. Okay, so now you can see that the, the watch face is now dim and this is the always on clock. So even if you're not using the screen, you'll still always be able to see the time. And the cool thing is as you download different watch faces, they all have their own unique always on clock that will show. And as soon as I tap the screen, it will wake up. All right, so now while I love this always on clock feature, it can be a big drainer on battery. So um, I don't recommend that you keep it on all the time. Unfortunately, it just is a big drainer on battery, but it's fun when you go out to events to have it on. So, you know, it might be something you want to use sort of sparingly. I'm going to just turn it off for now. Okay, and also forgive me, I went in a really weird order. I don't know why I started in the bottom right. I should have started in the top left. So I'm just, that was silly of me to do. But anyway, to the far left here, this is your power saving mode. You can turn this on if you're simply just trying to you know, conserve battery. You have your power button here and this, uh, you can power off the watch or you can make a call to emergency services. You can also program medical information on the watch as well. And, I'm not gonna go through every single one. I wanna mainly focus on navigating the watch, but I just wanted to show you some of those important things. Now, this is your shortcut to settings. This will take you right to your settings menu, and this will take you to your different modes. Now, this is an important one to know because, for example, if you go into a movie theater, you can turn on the, the theater mode, which will dim down the screen, and it will um, it'll uh, silence all notifications. And this is the sleep mode mode as well, and this, um, you can manually turn this on, so at night, again, you won't get bombarded with notifications, and you can also customize that in the settings. Now, you can also swipe to the left, and there's another list of options. You can turn your watch to a flashlight, control the brightness, uh, do not disturb mode. You can toggle the Wi-Fi on and off, and you can turn on the water lock mode, which is great for when you're uh, in the shower or in a pool. Um, the watch is very sensitive to touch, and so if you're gonna be around water, you'll want to turn on that water lock just so that your watch doesn't go crazy. And then you have a few other options here as well. So this is just your main shortcuts to the most frequently used settings. Now, so just wanna point out once again, when you swipe to the right, it will show notifications, but when you swipe to the left on the home screen, it will show some different things. So these are called tiles. This is your activity tracker, and this will basically track your steps, your active time, and your activity calories as well. So this is great for just tracking how active you are for the day. And as we keep swiping through, you have some shortcuts to launch workouts. So walking, running, biking, and, and more. Um, the watch will also uh, actively detect your workouts. So for example, I tend to run a lot. And so uh, if I'm walking or running after about 10 minutes, it will detect it and it will pick up tracking the entire workout. So um, you either wanna start this at the beginning of your workout or just simply start the workout and the watch should detect what you're doing and start tracking. Now, uh, right now I just tapped the wrong uh, option. If I wanna go back, I simply just need to start on the left side of the watch and swipe in. 
and that takes you back one step. So side of the watch and just swipe in, that's how you go back one step. As we keep swiping through here, you have a, an energy score tile. Um, you have this tile, which is sort of a snapshot of your heart rate, your steps, and some other things here, your sleep. You have your weather, you have your calendar, and your battery life for the watch and for your phone, ECG score, and you can add more tiles and you can rearrange those tiles. Now I wanna point out, if you hold down on any one of these tiles for one second, it will allow you to uh, erase a tile that maybe you say, hey, I'm not gonna use that. For example, you might say, uh, I don't really wanna use this one, I don't know what that does. Tap on the red minus in the upper right corner and that will just delete that tile. You can also hold down the tile so hold down to get to the menu, hold down again, and then you can drag left or right and you can change the order. Maybe you want your weather to be much closer to the front when you swipe so you can drag it over like that. So those are just a few things you can do in terms of just organizing the order of what tiles you see. OK, now when you swipe up on the main screen, it takes you to your apps. This will show you all the apps that are currently installed on your watch and you can swipe through. So you have, you know, timers, alarms, you have a video player, your Outlook email, your camera controller, your voice recorder, calculator, your uh, alarm or your routines, Galaxy Buds. So you have all kind of uh, apps that are already installed here and you can obviously install more. Now as we swipe up, now if you tap on this little circle right here, this is your recent apps. Now this will show you all the apps that are currently running in the background of your watch. You can simply hit close all if you wanna close all the apps. This is something you should do once a day just to help with uh, the watch not overworking and the battery draining. Now also, I can hold down on the home screen here and this will allow me to either customize the current watch face I'm using or watch this, hold down again, swipe over, or I can add a new watch face. So let's add a new watch face. There's a couple that come pre-installed. I really like this one because this is the watch face that comes installed on the Ultra. So maybe you opted to get the uh, lower end model but you can still have the same look that the watch, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra has, which is pretty sweet. So now there are a lot more watch faces you can download, and I'll show you how to do that once we get back to the wearable app. Now, if you hold down the home screen and you tap on customize here, you can basically change, you know, how all the colors, um, what data is shown. You have a lot of control here. so. Right now, uh, at the top here is showing you this is the background. So I can just swipe around the edge of the watch here to switch between different background options. So from there, or I can swipe this way. And there's a ton of background options that are available. Let's go with, uh, oh, went back to the main one. Okay, we can go to this one. If you go up to the top here, there's some fun two-tone ones as well. Let's go with that one. And if I swipe left, I can change the font size or the font type. Let's go with this one. Now I can change more colors on the screen. So let's go with this one here. I like that. And then swipe left. And then I can actually change what data is shown on the screen. So maybe you don't want the compass to be in the center. Maybe you would rather see your battery life. You can simply tap on that little blue circle and you can then pick a different option. So let's go to, for example, battery. I want to know my battery percentage so I know if I need to charge up. And there's so many options that are going to be available in this menu here. OK, let's pick our messages. And now I have a shortcut to my messages right in the center here. And then you can pick on any one of these other options if you want to change the data that's shown. And if we swipe left, you can also change what data is shown here, here and here. So you have a lot of different options when it comes to customizing and every watch will allow you to customize different things about the watch. So pretty cool. All right, let's switch over to the wearable app so you, I can show you some of the things you can do within there and things that you'll want to set right out of the gate. So let's swipe up and let's go to watch settings. Now let's start with going to notifications. 
because you'll want to set what apps have permission to send notifications to the watch. We're gonna tap on app notifications. And here you'll see that there's some that are already selected, but you can go through and you can select more. I encourage you not to select all. You don't want to allow every single app to see notifications, because if not, your wrist is going to just vibrate all day and it's gonna be very annoying. So go through and decide. Maybe you use the Google Messages app and you don't use the Samsung Messages. Well, in that case, you'll want to turn on messages and turn off this messages. You may also go through here and say, okay, um, I want my Google Chat to send messages. Let's see, what else? I caution you against uh, Instagram alerts and YouTube alerts because those just send alerts all friggin' day and it can be really frustrating. So it's something that, you know, if you want, you can always turn it on and then turn it off later if it gets annoying. In my experience, those just tend to be very tedious and they're always popping up. Now, Uber, that's definitely one I'd love to have the alerts go to my watch. So if my ride is here, I can look down and my ride is here. So anyway, um, this is how you control what apps are gonna send you notifications. Now, right now, out of the box, it's set where you're only gonna get notifications to your watch if you're not on your phone. Because if you're on your phone, you should be seeing the notification. So it's only gonna ping you when you're not using the phone, but you can change that. You can tell it, hey, show me alerts even if I'm using the phone. So that's up to you to figure out what works best for you. Now, another thing, right now it's set to sync the do not disturb mode with your phone. So basically if you turn on do not disturb on your phone, it's gonna put your watch in do not disturb and vice versa. So that also might be a setting you may wanna change. Sometimes we don't want our phone to ping, but we do want our watch to still let us know if something is happening. Now, let's go back. So next, let's go to buttons and gestures. And here, you'll notice that all the gestures by default are turned off. And so you may wanna turn these on. The gestures are really cool and you can do a lot of just fun things with them. So you'll simply want to enable these and when you try to turn them on, it's gonna give you a demonstration of what it looks like. So when you pinch, um, again, that's gonna allow you to answer a call, dismiss an alert, launch an app, control your music or take photos. You just pinch twice. So let's turn this on. You can always turn these off later, but I would say just turn it on now. This is showing you when you twist your wrist twice, you can shake to dismiss alerts as well. And there's a feature called knock knock, which is knocking twice. You can program the watch where when you do a double knock gesture, you can have it launch a specific app, a specific workout routine. You can tie it to a lot of different things. I actually have a whole video where I talk about the different gestures and I'll link that video right here so you can see kind of what the gestures look like and some of the different things you can do with them. Now here's another one. So right here it says press and hold to launch Bixby. Now you can change it. So this is showing you when you basically press and hold the power button, it'll launch the Bixby assistant, but you can actually just make it so when you press and hold, it will um, bring you the power off menu. So you kind of decide what works best for you there. I'm also gonna link here a tips and tricks video so you can see a bunch of other things you can do with the watch. Again, there's so much, I can't cover it all in this video, but I wanna just make sure you have all the information on what you can do with the Watch 7. Okay, next, let's talk about how to get more cool watch faces for the watch. So right here, we're gonna tap on watch faces and you'll find um, a big list. Now, I just wanna show you as we swipe through here, you're gonna see there's only two that are currently synced with the watch. So if you wanna add more to the watch, you simply just have to go through this list here. I think you can do up to 10 watches at one time. So let's go through and just download a few more watches. Let's download this one. You're gonna hit allow and install. And let's see, that one looks pretty cool. Let's do that one. And just simply swipe through the list. And there's even more watches available than what you see on this list here but these are the main ones that are gonna come pre-installed and you can download more obviously from the Play Store. This is a cool one here and this one mirrors the Watch 4, which was definitely one of my favorites back in the day, so I'm gonna add that one. And you can see 
how it's also updating on the watch as well. All right, so we've added a couple here. Let's add two more. Because again, whatever you see up here is going to be available on the watch. It's actually going to download and install to the watch. So that's why, why you want to add a couple, because if you ever want to change it, you won't always have to use the phone to sync it. So I like the, this weather app. This one's kind of cool. Let's update that one. And let's just pick one more. This one is pretty cool as well. This photo one will actually let you add your own picture as the background of the, the watch. So right now you can see it's a picture of a dog. Now right here, if I tap on this little pencil, this will let me change the background. I'm gonna tap background. I'm gonna hit uh, plus gallery, allow all. And now I can go in and I can make my own picture the background. There we go. I'm going to increase the brightness a bit. Hit done. And now I'll have my own picture as the background. Obviously, you may want to make it a family member or a, a, a place that you like to hang out. So that's how you change the background so that the watch will show one of your own custom pictures. We're going to hit save. So now it's locked in and you can see that's what it looks like on the screen. So again, you can add more. But right now we have four watches that are synced that are going to sync with the watch and be on actually on the watch. So you can change it whenever you want. Now, if I swipe all the way to the bottom, I can go more watches on Google Play and then I can go to the Play Store and download lots of other fun watch faces here. So that's uh, what kind of watch faces in a nutshell. And again, tapping on any one of these will allow you to customize it in the app as well. You select it and then tap on that little blue pencil and that's going to let you change the color and do any other uh, customization um, based on what you see in the settings here. Now, so far, guys, if you found value in the video, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It'll help this video to reach more people and just help folks who are new to this watch. Now, next, let's talk about the tiles. Now, I showed you when you swipe to the left and you see all those different tiles. Um, there are more tiles that are available. Now, these are all the ones that are currently on the watch. If you'd like to delete more, you can also do it within the app here. For example, maybe this today's events, you can hit the minus and erase that. And you can go through and you'll find some other really cool widgets or excuse me, tiles that are available. So, for example, like tracking your food. That's a good one. This is a more detailed steps tracker. This is a heart rate tracker. Um, AGE index. So go through and find, you know, other watch faces that you like. You can also change the order from here by simply holding down on one of the watches and dragging it left or right. So the further left you bring it, um, the closer it will be. Now, once you hit save, it's going to sync with the watch. So now when you swipe left, you're going to see that first instead of that uh, other uh, set of this thing right here. So you can you can do a lot of the customization within the app and I would encourage you to do that because the app just it's just easier to move things around. So next, spend some time in the tips and user guide section. You'll find a bunch of other really helpful tips there. I want to show you what it looks like when a call comes through the phone so you know how to answer the phone. It's really simple, but I just want to show it anyway. So I'm going to trigger a call right now and you'll see it pop up on the screen. Now you can um, put your finger on the green button and drag up and that will answer. And then you can also drag here to raise or lower the volume. Now let's trigger that call again, but this time we're gonna decline the call. And I wanna show you how you can send an auto reply. Okay, so to decline the call, First, you can either drag the red call button this way, or if you swipe up, you can send a text reply. Please text me. Now that way it will decline the call and it will also send the auto text as well saying, hey, please text me, I'm not available right now. Now let's jump back to the watch here. I wanna show you a few more things before we close out the video. I wanna show you how to set up your Samsung Pay because you can add your credit card right to your watch and you can pay right from your watch. So holding down on this bottom button here, simply hold down for one second. That's gonna launch your Samsung wallet. You're gonna hit the arrow and this is gonna first install it. 
and then it's going to kick you right back over to the phone where you'll need to set up Samsung Pay on your phone first. Once you set it up on the phone, then you can sync specific credit cards with your watch and you'll be able to pay with your watch. So we're going to hit install. Once installed, we're going to hit open. We're going to hit verify and you'll want to set a pin for your wallet. You're going to have to enter this pin every single time you try to pay with your watch. All right. So now my pin is in. I'm next going to need to scan my fingerprint. Hit continue. Now, in order to use Samsung Pay, you will need to set up a watch screen lock, which is going to be a code that you will enter on your watch. Um, so it's going to lock your watch and make it more secure. We're going to hit settings. You'll decide if you want it to be a, a, a pin code or a pattern. I'm going to make mine a pin code. We're going to check the box here. Tap on set pin. And then you're set a four digit pin for your watch. It will make you enter it twice. Make sure it's something that you can remember, obviously. And if you look at the phone here, we're all done. We're going to hit done. And now, so again, I've already had uh, my account is already set up, so it may ask you to do a few more things first, but you'll want to go to payment cards. Now I already have a credit card that is synced again to my account. So all I need to do is hit activate to add the card and then I'll be good to go. Now, just so you can see, this is what the pin screen looks like. And I have to enter this pin code first before I can do any more uh, changes on the phone that will show on the watch. So tapping the screen here and you'll see the little lock at the top here and I'm going to enter that pin code. OK, so my pin code is in. Now I can jump back over and I can activate this credit card and then you'll need to have your card handy so you can enter the expiration, the security code and your zip code. Now, there was one small hiccup when I tried to do this. For some reason, it said that the credit card company declined the request to be able to add the credit card to my wallet. So here is the backup way if that happens to you. So on your Samsung phone, you're going to swipe up to get to Samsung Pay and you'll hit the plus in the upper right corner to add a, a new card to your wallet. So I'm going to hit payment cards and then add a credit card. Now you can add the card by scanning it or you can hit add card manually and then you can enter the credit card number, the card name. And let's do all that right now. OK, so I added all the information in. I'm going to agree to the terms and then we'll go back and try again to add the credit card. We do need to have it send a text message to verify the information. It's blurred out for security purposes, so if you see any blurriness on the screen, that's why. OK, so we've successfully added a new card to our Samsung wallet. Now it's going to ask you automatically if you want to add that card to your watch. So this is even better. So we're going to hit set. Hit replace as our default card. Tap add to watch. We're going to agree to the terms again. We have to verify the card again. And there we go. Our card is officially added to our wallet. So now we do need to do a quick update. So we'll update the wallet. Lots of steps, you know, for the sake of security and running the latest software. So it's a little tedious, but I wanted to make sure to walk through all these steps with you so that you can successfully add a card to your watch as well. You should be able to use your watch at any terminal that uses NFC. A lot of the terminals in the US are being converted so that you can do wireless payments. So if it accepts um, just tap uh, payments and you should be able to pay with your watch. Let's switch back over to the watch. Now we will have to put our pin code in. OK, now let's hold down on that bottom button to launch our Samsung pay and we'll enter our pin. And now our credit card is showing up, which is perfect. And now we just simply you take your watch and you hold it right next to the reader and it will be able to pick up uh, your credit card signal and allow you to pay. So. Anyway, that is the process to set up and use Samsung Pay. And this takes us to the end of our video. So hope you guys found this helpful. If it was, hit that like button down below. Again, the goal was to make this a beginner's walkthrough so you could 
know how to set up your phone, what settings you'll want to tweak, and just how to get you going. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button down below. If there's more things you would like to see, please drop it in the comment section down below. If I get enough people to respond, then we'll make a part two and we'll just keep going over all the cool things you can do with this watch. So I'll also drop a link to a playlist right here that'll have all the videos that I've shot on this phone as well. I've shot tips and tricks videos, how to improve the battery. I've shot all these other videos. So check out that playlist there to learn more. And thanks again for watching. Take care. And as always, have a good one.